Hello and welcome to another episode of Rapidly Aging Technology. So here we have not a computer. Believe you me, we are getting computer stuff up and running. We're getting set up in the new laboratory here. Um, not quite ready, but we got, we're getting there. It's on the way. But in the meantime, we have this guy. This is the Brother AX22 electronic typewriter. Uh, this machine came to me from work. In fact, it was given to me for free because they know that I'm a, a, a weirdo. So we're going to look at this thing, uh, crack open all its covers, uh, probably give it um, a little bit of a cleaning, probably some rubber rejuvenation, and then we'll um, start typing on it. But uh, first I want to kind of get its plate and uh, cleaned up a little bit. Once again, I can't remember whether it's platen or platen. Platen seems right. Anyway, so what features uh, do we have and what can we see on the outside? So we have a few features listed here along with a five-year warranty. Easy to use keyboard, wow. Full line liftoff correction memory, so it does have correction tape. Uh, word out correction, it can, um, you can have it correct a, a full word out. It can do 10 and 12 pitch typing, auto centering and underlining, hmm. Uh, and it has a bunch of call brother for help. And you can get a starter kit, ooh. So this must be the retail sticker that's just been left on it. But you can buy an extra wheel and some ribbons and correction tape. Well, I have some spare correction tape and ribbons. We'll look at that. So we have top here. This is going to be the cover for the platen, uh, along with the paper bale, which is manual. And so this switch disengages the rollers behind there, so you can just pull paper out. On the back, not much to look at but we will turn it around. So on the back, we have the serial number. Um, it uses 60 hertz power, as you could probably imagine, at 0.35 amps. Uh, double insulation, fancy, fancy, made in the USA. Uh, for domestic important components, this is equipment you listed. Not seeing any um, production date on it, though. And you'll notice that this is kind of sticking out here. That's because this is where the cable hides. So we're just gonna pop that out. It has a strain relief here. There's nothing, it's just an empty cavity. And we're going to feed that through its hole. And there's that. It has some ventilation. And we have some more ventilation there. Nothing much on the back, there are some support lines so that this can be set on its um, back uh, if it just for storage. There's nothing really on the bottom. And then we got a smooth foot, smooth foot, padded foot, padded foot along with um, things used for, for its construction holding together and the ventilation. But it does have a handy dandy handle, because this is a portable typewriter. Uh, it is not the most portable typewriter. In fact, um, there are a lot of manual typewriters that are more portable, little suitcase guys. But um, it, it is capable of being moved. So let's get it open. All right, we're going to pull this up. The top has some tabs here, which open up easily, and then it slides off. And there is nothing on the inside. And then we have the keyboard, which is um, more or less a standard keyboard. Let me look at it here. We have shift, we have um, return, we have a backspace, a well, a correct button, and a word out, line out, along with code, so kind of a code, kind of a function key. Um, here we can set the line spacing, we can set the pitch, shift lock. Oh, we can turn on auto underline, probably with a code, and super and subscript. So there are theoretically a lot of um, options on this. I'm not sure if we'll be able to explore all of them. But let's, uh, let's get the top open here. And let's get that cleaned, because that is not looking pleasant. So if we move the paper bale out of the way, which 
there is a little bit of spring loading, so it, it holds itself up and goes down uh, decidedly. Um, this is going to need some some work here. Let's open that up. So if you recall my um, video on the uh, TTX uh, Daisy Wheel printer, this should look kind of familiar to you in general. While it's not the same mechanism and cartridge system, the idea is the same. You have a little uh, hammer mechanism. In this case, it looks like it's uh, actuated from the bottom and actually has a little weight up here. It hits a um, basically a little plastic uh, piece that has the letter or whatever symbol on it. It slaps the ribbon, which then slaps onto the paper, leaving an imprint. And the cartridge cycles a uh, one pass uh, ribbon through it. Only um, this one is, if you can look at it, it's fairly thin. The other one um, is a double where it will actually move it up and down and, uh, you know, so uh, top, bottom, top, bottom to use up the wider ribbon. This is thinner, so it just passes straight through without having that jostling mechanism, which I'm sure is easier on manufacturing. It also has the correction tape on there, which that is probably quite dry, so we're probably going to need to get that sorted out. So, first thing, I do appreciate how this guide here is metal. While on the um, TTX it's plastic and already has some cracks through it, which I've you know, added tape to reinforce. So this might be overall a more durable unit. No way to plug it into a computer though. So the first step I'm going to do to clean just off the schmutz, I'm going to use some just, just some simple Windex on a paper towel and rotate it through. Just get it cleaned. And then I'm going to use some rubber rejuvenator. Now, you should do this without the rollers engaged. So those are disengaged. Because I don't want it getting onto those in case those are a little different. Um, but let's get this cleaned. All right, I'm just going to focus on this side a little bit. And it's actually does the rag's not looking too bad. All right, so that's the rag there. Let's dry it off so we don't need a chemical reaction. All right, so now that we've done that, it does look a little better, but I can tell it's rock solid, and that's just going to be the nature of the beast. I don't know really how long these tend to last before they get hard, so we're just going to. Uh, do what we have to. So now with the rubber restore, you don't want to get too much on there. So I'm definitely going to apply it to the paper towel and work it onto there a little bit. What rubber rejuvenator does is it basically eats it into the rubber just a touch to get rid of the um, hard, smooth parts and to uh, restore a something that's a little rougher, a little so some a little more tackiness to it. So we have this damped cloth, and we're just going to make our way across the entire surface. I've used this with decent effect on uh, rubber and rubber rollers and things in the past. So I have decent hopes it's going to see it. It definitely eats into it a little bit. So, yeah, look at that. So now I'm going to take a clean rag. And dry one, and let's just get this guy dried off here. And there's that. So let's see here. Well, it looks a ton better as far as cleanliness. Um, seems to have just a touch more tackiness. It's not, I mean, it still is very smooth, but it doesn't... Um, seem too grungy. I'm going to maybe do another treatment or so, and we will come back um, once I'm done. So, uh, I did one more treatment, and yeah, it seems to have a little bit of grip to it now. So, um, what we will do next, I think, is see if we can... Whoop. What we'll do next is see if we can uh, switch out the, the correction tape, because that correction tape, I do believe, is quite, quite dry. 
So we're going to see if we can switch it out. So to make things easier on ourselves, I think we're going to ourselves. Let's get this uh, cartridge out. Now these cartridges tend to survive pretty well because it's it's not ink. So that with that after you you push that little holder and it comes right out. This one is a genuine brother brand, so that's good. And you can see the remnants of whatever was typed on it last. And here we can see the correction tape roller. So what can we learn? So it comes off on this side. Sticky part pointing onto itself. Comes out, goes around this bend in front of this guide, moves back around and then twists back on to the onto the take up reel. So I have my replacement. If I take it off, it's basically tape. And there's definitely some residue on my fingers. Don't use rubber restore without um, gloves on, folks. So we're just going to uh, take this off. It pulls right off, and there's been a lot of correction on it. And we are going to remove it. It has some teeth on the other side. So we're going to do that. And then put this one on here. I hope my hands don't block too much of what I'm doing, but. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll try to make it work. I'm also doing this without the manual, so keep that in mind. Okay, so we need to get that on to there, and it's teeth lock in. We need this white part out, and so we'll slide through that guy around. The edge there. Feed that round through there, around this other notch, and then we need to get it onto the little spindle here. And it will twist this way. Whoop. Let's tighten it here. Well, I think we got it. I think we got it. I don't know how much of a view you got of that. Um, my hands were in the way of from pretty much every angle. Hopefully enough to see it, but back on, white side is out, so that should actually apply onto the, um, apply onto what we typed and then goes on to its we'll take up reel. Now we will take our cartridge, which still has some life in it. It goes from this spool to this spool. And as you can see, or maybe not, there's plenty of tape in there. So we are going to reuse this rather than use one of the new ones I have. And down that goes. It just slips right in. There's nothing too fancy about it. So now I'm going to get this plugged in. We'll get some paper and we're going to do something. Take me for a test type. To operate self demo features, depress code and line. So we're going to do that. We're going to let the machine show us what it can do. All right, let's close the top up. Okay, well that, <laughs> it is plastic, so it's not super reassuring. And we have our paper guide here. I'm going to just leave it more or less there. <laughs> I will need to set up the margins on this how I like it. Presumably it will remember them, even when it's not plugged in. I would hope that it can. Maybe it can't. So 
So feeding paper through. This would usually not be on the edge like that, but we, we basically put it there. So now because it caught there, we fed at a goofy angle. So we're going to release the rollers. So we'll straighten it out more or less. Okay, that's plenty. And so I'm going to turn it on. This is probably going to correct its position. And then we will hit um, line and code together. All right, flipping the rocker switch, which is on this um, left-hand side here under the uh, roller knob. Nothing fancy to look at. OK, went through a little self-test. Basically, just spun its um, daisy wheel. So now we're going to do a line, code and line. So let's do that together. All right, we have the code button and the line button. So we're going to put them together. Hold. Hmm. Oh, there we go. Whoop. Well, that was a fairly impressive demo. Um, as far as centering goes, well, look at this. That probably tells me exactly where um, to line up the paper guide. So that would have been smart. Um, it can definitely take some wider, a little bit wider paper there. But yeah. So what did we get? Hello. This Daisy Wheel electronic typewriter offers you state of the art. Uh, quality with features such as dual pitch, Pika and Elite. So let's see, Elite is 12 pitch and Pika is 10. Um, Elite is a little bit, so higher the pitch, um, the smaller the type. Um, I don't know if, I think pitch is um, like characters per inch. So 12 characters per inch versus 10. Feel free to correct me if I got that wrong, but um, I think that's generally how it goes. Full line correction with uh, relocation after correction. And it, uh, do, do, ignore me, various automatic functions like centering, underlining, right margin flush, etc. Word out correction to erase an entire word. And we saw it erase the word and type it back over. And I mean, it looks clean because they use the same letters. Uh, just one touch of the word out key. Fancy stuff. So. How about we maybe try out some of these features? It says auto underline. I'm surprised it didn't show it here. Let's reload it and give it a try. Also, when you're using typewriters, it's wise to use at least two sheets of paper. So the main sheet and the backing sheet. Um, it just adds a little more effectively padding. Um, and especially, it's more and more important when the uh, platens have gotten hard. So I recommend using at least two. It didn't um, punch through, but that's more of a big, beefy manual typewriter kind of deal. Right, reloading, pa loading paper in. That lined up a lot better because it didn't, um, cause it didn't um, run into this guy. Yeah, good enough for what we're doing at least. So we are in. Um, well, this is an interesting. We can either look at the paper or look at the keys. I imagine you'd rather see it type. In fact, will it? We'll see how happy it is with with the cover up. So 
we will do shift, which is electronic. Oh, does it know this is up? It doesn't like that being up. It's smart enough. Well, fancy, fancy. Okay. So we've typed test, and I'm going to put it to one line. All right. If I change it to delete and do test, you'll notice that they're closer together. And it looks like this typeface is probably either or, so it works fine, which is great. We'll keep it at 10. Now I'm going to do, we have auto underline, auto underline on or off. So if I think if I do code and four, it should do it. So let's hit that. Okay, I've hit it and let's type something in. Hey, did you notice how that was slower? That's because it was having to basically type twice for every character. Once for the letter and once for the underline. So that's what auto underline does. We're going to turn that off. Command code 5. Um, now let's type in just A. So we have something and then we're going to do code 9 for super and we'll do one and we'll do and did that do it only once only once and then code zero for two so let's let's i'm gonna make pitch 12 to maybe make that fit better i think you'd like to do double spacing um actually let's do that uh, when you're doing superscript or subscripts, you might want to do double line spacing. So now that I figured out the code myself, let's look. So we're going to do a uh, just a word pants, and then we're going to do a code nine, which is superscript. We'll give it one, and then it goes back down, and then we'll do code zero for subscript, and give that a two. So the end result. You get your superscript and subscript. So if you needed to actually do a report and um, do uh, citations, for example, my favorite, Chicago, which is much better than MLA. You can fight me on that one. Or APA. Ugh. Chicago is the way. With and not with endnotes, footnotes. Okay, endnotes are for people who don't actually want to look at the. We'll look at the citations. Footnotes are for people who actually might want to look at it. That is my view on footnotes versus endnotes with Chicago style. Anyway, we have that feature. All right, so now we have we have a center option. So code two. Okay, it beeped so it's happy with us, maybe. And what happens if I just type something? Um, laser pants. Hmm. Aha! You have to... Hmm... Is that more or less centered where we need to be? And what happens if I type something? The... Big... Dog... Period... Enter. Okay. So what it did is based upon the margins it's set for, which, um, so we do code two after we've already returned. It centered, it goes to where the center should be, and then it listens, it basically pays attention to what you're typing and adjusts itself. So if we do, um, this is a test of the center feature. It's counted out your steps. And then types it. Now, clearly with the way the margins are set up currently, it's putting the center here as opposed to here. So that's something for me to 
figure out. Um, oh, well, I could do that here. So left margin is good, so we probably want to go to, oh, fiddlesticks. Like about one inch margins. So about maybe there. So if I go about there, and if I do code, Uh, code right margin, I'm assuming that made that the right margin. Let's um, find out. I'll do a character there and then we'll just type across and see what happens because it should stop at the margin. So we'll just do Hey, it said it. So that also means that if we do return code center, it should be, yep, that's much more centered with the paper. Look at that. And we'll do center, because we're excited. All right, what else can we do on this guy? Um, there's a right, um, there's a, a right justification. So if I do code three, RMF pulls it over there, and we're just going to say this is the right side. Sorry, I had you guys bumped up against the table, so you're jostling with it. Okay. So we have some interesting things. So let's say let's say we type a word. Um, uh, today. Now let's say we spelled it wrong. We got today with a couple of S's at the end. If we do word out, it should wipe out the whole word. Well, let's give it a try. And look at that. It, while the imprint is there, it pretty well pulled off all of the, um, the carbon. So does a great job. Also, the print quality on this thing is very good, if you saw from the images. So let's find some other features here. Backspace should probably just, just go back, because it's a typewriter. Yep. Now, if, for example, we were to type a sentence and decide that's not what we want for our letter, um, this is the best of days, and I am out of ideas. If I do uh, word out but code word out, that should be line out. So it should wipe out the whole thing. Now, the thing with these, as you could probably see the line moving, the cartridge um, or cassette or whatever you want to call it, the, the, thing, that, the, the, the thing that has the ribbon, and the um, whiteout um, correction strips keep copies of everything that's either printed or, or erased on them, which makes this, this era of typewriter a security concern for um, uh, secure organizations, government, um, businesses, uh, I guess secret agencies. So I do believe during the time where this was what you use, this kind of machine, even if it wasn't necessarily this advanced, uh, they would have to be very secure about um, disposing of their uh, used ribbons and everything, and probably had locking um, disposal containers. Wouldn't surprise me. I do believe they they would have had to have taken steps. Otherwise, you can unspool this ribbon and read off, in reverse, everything it typed. Um, so yeah, so, so the, these are 
keep that in mind if you want to use one of these for something that, uh, you know, if you're, I don't know, if you're a, a, a secret agent, don't, uh, don't be surprised if this is a security risk for you. But it isn't connected to the internet, that's the thing. Someone has to physically get to this and steal your, your ribbon cartridge. Well, I think that is about all for now. I've had fun exploring this with you. Um, I do like typewriters, and this guy is actually going to go by where I sit in the living room and allow me to do letters when I'm in there. Uh, because I have a couple portable manual machines, which at some point you will see, but the downside with them is just if you're sitting on your lap, for example, um, they do require you know a little more force to use. There's more movement, so they're a bit more fiddly. This, the keys are very soft touch. I mean, it's just like a rubber, pretty much a rubber dome keyboard, um, and the mechanism moves pretty smoothly. So with that, I hope you have you know a great day. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe and hit the bell uh, icon. I know a lot of YouTubers say that, but many of the other YouTubers will put out you know daily content, and that's a lot of emails. I I think at my peak uh, was probably doing you know maybe once a week, um, and right now it's a bit more hit and miss. Though with this new area set up, which I will probably reveal once it's a little more done. Uh, gives me a nice space to to actually work on these things. And I've also put up some acoustic treatment to keep echoes down. Anyway, have a great day. Hope to see you in the next video. Yes, computers are coming. I'm thinking, unless something changes, I might do uh, talk about my, my ThinkPad, my not IBM, IBM ThinkPad, which will be a computer for you to see. And I'll talk about some of the um, improvements you can make to it that are they're relatively simple. And I need to wash my hands because I have chemicals eating into my flesh and I'm going to die.